r slash no sleep posted by reddit user britain rt how i became a god i wasn't smart when i was born in fact i was a cripple and a simpleton i couldn't walk so i dragged myself around the forest floor never straying from my mother's presence I felt at the time she never cared much for my siblings and I, mostly letting us fend for ourselves. But I realize now she kept a careful eye on us. She was cold, distant, and dumb, like me. But she knew how to watch for large animals and other potential threats as my brothers, sisters, and I slowly figured out how to feed ourselves. It seems cruel in retrospect, and many of my siblings died young. Life was hard crawling in the dirt of the forest floor, treating anything remotely edible as a banquet to be cherished. As I slowly grew, she eventually disappeared, leaving me and two of my remaining brothers alone at a very young age. They both perished shortly after. But somehow, I managed to survive against all odds, crawling in the mud and struggling against my disability, finding food and shelter anywhere I could. I slowly learned how to use my disability to its advantage, setting ambushes and traps for a small game. But I was still fundamentally an idiot, and no matter how clever I thought I was back then, failure was common and life continued to be difficult. Surviving in the jungle while mentally disabled and handicapped was mostly a factor of sheer luck, though at the time I thought myself to be quite adept. I never stayed in one place for long, and I moved very slowly, but carefully. My diet consisted of anything I could find laying around which was edible, mostly small animals I could catch but I could go hungry for very long periods of time. Eventually, I stumbled on a small stream with an even smaller cave nearby. I made it my home for a while. It wasn't much, but it was hidden well and provided some sense of security. I would drag myself out to the stream and bask in the warm, tropical sun at times, take naps under trees, and eat as often as I could manage. <sighs> Those were my simple pleasures in life back then. Predators were always a threat, and being crippled, running was not an option. So, I learned to hide. I learned to read my environment. I learned when to be loud and when to be quiet. And against all odds, I somehow survived. Once again, in retrospect... I mistook all my luck for cleverness. And that would be my entire life, until I starved or finally ran out of luck. That's where my story really begins. Where it should have ended. I was crawling along the forest floor, searching for something, anything to eat. It had been many days and I had a furious hunger. All I knew how to do was hobble around, crawling and dragging myself through the jungle, looking for scraps and small animals I could ambush on the ground. I had just pulled myself through a small bush when I saw it. The jaguar was low to the ground, in a pouncing position. On any other day I might have become its meal, then and there but it was focused on something else. I remained absolutely still, barely even breathing, hoping not to draw its attention. It crouched down even further, clearly preparing to strike. Its eyes focused, like only a hunter's can be. I dared a quick glance at its target, and what I saw was the most unusual bird giant and dangerous in its own right, bright and colorful, 
and nearly the size of the jaguar itself. It was a rainbow of feathers, with a crown of plumage on its head. Of course, at the time, I didn't realize how unusual this creature was. All I knew was that this jaguar was going to try and take down the giant avian in any moment. And it did. Try to, at least. The bird took flight the moment the jaguar leapt, and it soared into the canopy, the cat pursuing. I remained still for some time to see if it would return, but eventually eased out into the small clearing. There wasn't much of interest, so I wiggled up the small hill the bird had been resting on, only to find when reaching the top that it was in fact a giant bird's nest, and to my delight, resting inside were three very large eggs of unusual color. Of course, I ate them all right then and there, and then dragged myself back to my usual resting spot. Sleeping with a full belly was always a reward in its own. But, that's when things started to change. Over the next few days, I started to notice things I hadn't been aware of before. Small things at first, observations about my surroundings that I hadn't noticed before. The world looked a bit more colorful than it did, shapes a little more defined. I was able to pay attention to more things at once. As days turned to weeks, I started realizing I could make plans that were more sophisticated than just silently waiting for something to run by so I could grab it, or looking for scraps laying around. Yes, I started to devise clever traps, using rocks and other features of my environment to help me catch my food. Choosing my resting location in places where bushes and leaves would ensure I could hear predators on the ground. I was still crippled, but I was growing smarter. I also began to grow bigger, a lot bigger. I had been an undurfed runt most of my life, but in the span of several months I had become a vertebral giant, well nourished now and nearly six feet all muscle. I still had to crawl around, but I could do so with a speed and vigor I had never known. I felt optimistic and elated, yet I had no idea what was still to come. As months turned into years, I was able to walk for the first time in my life. Few predators could stand before me now, as I stood nearly twelve feet tall, a titan of the forest with a strength to match. I strolled carelessly through the trees, eating what I wished, when I wished, where I wished. I built my first house out of stone and fallen trees. I was the king of the jungle. And I climbed my first tree. I'll never forget it. Hundreds of feet up in the forest canopy. I finally reached the sunlight on top of the tallest tree I could find and looked out upon my domain. Endless green as the eye could see in every direction. A playground which had once threatened to consume me, but which was now mine to explore freely. And so, I did. I began to travel more. I discovered rivers, waterfalls, groves, huge cave systems and giant sinkholes, and lakes and so many new types of plants and animals I had never seen. Frogs, birds, cats, and spiders, animals which ate plants and plants which ate animals. Over time, I took a special love of watching the tree monkeys, as they were the only animals which seemed to express an intelligence like my own. Which is why when I found a small one which had been injured, I carefully collected it and took it with me. I nursed it back to health, fed it, earned its trust, and it became my little companion. There were no names back then, but none were needed. For the first time in my life I felt genuine love for this one specific creature. 
my first friend. I had to take great care as my growing never seemed to cease. By my memory and estimates, I may have been nearly 30 feet tall by then, and this sweet monkey was <laughs> barely a fly by comparison. But the joy it brought me as we traveled together, as he gathered tiny fruits for me, as he slept peacefully next to me, made me realize how lonely I had been all those decades, wandering the forest all by myself. Always just watching, but never feeling like more than an observer anymore. When he finally died peacefully of old age, I was, of course, heartbroken. I knew it was coming. I had seen how slowly he weakened and deteriorated. While I seemed to defy the years and continue to grow, time shifted the world around me. Landscapes slowly changed. Rivers altered. Animals came and went. After he died, I retreated back to a more observational phase of my life again, mostly wandering the forest and indulging in the sights and sounds around me. I don't know how long I spent like that before they found me. Other monkeys, but these ones were even more like me. They were extremely clever. They made noises at each other in rapid and consistent manners. They used tools like me, maybe even more clever than the ones I had devised. And of course, they were terrified of me. I was a giant towering over them, looming as tall as the trees. I mostly left them alone, but would sometimes go and watch over them. They built strange houses out of sticks and leaves, not too dissimilar to the one I built out of rock before. I no longer had a need for such a thing. They even appeared to be able to wield fire and lit up the night in ways that I had only seen from the thunder of an angry sky. As time went on, more and more of them would come and visit me, and I slowly gained their trust even if their caution and fear never fully passed. I learned over time what their noises meant, and after some effort on my part, we were able to communicate quite well. They would often come and visit me and ask questions about the area, good hunting grounds, water sources, place to make a new village. After all, I had been almost everywhere. One day, some of them started leaving strange carvings in stone about where I slept. I asked one of them about the artifacts, a youngling, who had come to ask for my help removing a mighty tree which threatened to fall on his hut. He told me that they were left as offerings, so that I might bless them with good fortune. He told me how their lives are hard and short, and then he told me that a god such as myself could surely make their lives better. That was the first time I had encountered the concept of a god. I had taken a liking to these little ones, so I had already been aiding them with my knowledge whenever they would ask for it. But he was right. I could do more. Much more. <laughs>